For much of the past three years at ILSR, my work has focused on examining the impact of chain dollar stores on locally owned businesses and local economies. I've written several reports about the impact of chain dollar stores, one of which has received almost 200,000 hits and been downloaded tens of thousands of times. We hear about many different types of problems with chain dollar stores, for example, crime and increasingly violent crime, uh, largely a result of dollar stores lean operating model and thin staffing. Unsafe conditions due to merchandise overcrowding, which is in turn a result of understaffing and warehousing problems. Um, the Department of Labor's Occupational Safety and Health Administration, in fact, has found more than 300 safety violations and inspections of roughly 500 Dollar Tree family dollar stores between 2017 and 2022. And OSHA added Dollar General to its severe violator enforcement program last year. We also find lots of chronic problems with deceptive pricing from scanner errors that result cumulatively in millions of dollars of overcharges for dollar store customers. Scanner errors of 2% or less of products scanned are considered permissible in most states, but county and state departments of weights and measures throughout the US have routinely found error rates in chain dollar stores in the teens, in some instances even as high as 88%, and almost always in favor of the store, not the shopper. Almost all states have now fined the two major dollar store chains for scanner errors, and a few states, Missouri, New Jersey, Ohio, have sued them in order to compel them to correct this chronic problem. Former Ohio Attorney General Mark Dan estimates that Dollar General alone may be overcharging customers as much as $100 million annually, which he calls a crime wave. Dollar stores also, also um, have cheater sizes uh, as a result of um, deals they make with their suppliers that make shoppers believe they're getting bargains, but that actually cost shoppers more on an ounce for ounce basis than they would usually pay in full service grocery stores. But by far the biggest problem that we see is the substantial negative impact of chain dollar stores on food stores and on the market for future food stores. By locating in close proximity to one another, dollar stores oversaturate local markets, leaching sales away from many other existing businesses such as hardware stores, office supply stores, and in particular grocery stores. Locally owned businesses invest their profits locally and build local generational wealth. Chain dollar stores extract money from the community and send it off to their shareholders and equity investors. Losing even a small percentage of sales can put a locally owned business at risk. They don't have the deep pockets of national chains, although their impact on local economies is far superior. There are obviously a number of factors that contribute to the creation of food deserts, but there is no doubt that the presence of chain dollar stores is one of the most significant of them and also one of the easiest to solve by regulating their development. Several peer-reviewed studies have been published in the past year demonstrating the significant role that chain dollar stores play in creating and exacerbating food deserts. There are two in particular that I wanted to mention to you today, and I'd be happy to provide the, uh, the link so that you can read them in detail if you, if you wish to do so. One of them was produced by UCLA and the University of Toronto, looking at 800 communities and the impact of dollar stores there. They found that people spend 14% less on fresh produce with one dollar store nearby. And if there are three or more dollar stores nearby, people spend 30% less on fresh produce, obviously having a significant impact on their health. They found that the presence of three chain dollar stores within a two mile radius leads to the death of a full service grocery store. And they did a simulation looking at what would the, 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 the business landscape be like if no dollar stores had opened after 2010. They found that we would have 54% more grocery stores and 47% more convenience stores in the US today. The second study was done by the University of Connecticut, North Dakota State, and the US Department of Agriculture. They looked specifically at independently owned grocery stores, and they found that one out of every 20 independent grocery stores will close within a few years of a dollar store opening. And the result is magnified significantly if two or three dollar stores enter the immediate market area. I recognize that regulating dollar store development is of course not the only remedy to the complex problem of food deserts, but we have found that no other potential remedy is likely to work if a neighborhood is oversaturated with dollar stores. It's for that reason that so many communities are now creating minimum distance requirements between dollar stores, requiring that new chain dollar stores locate at least one mile away and increasingly more like five miles away from existing dollar stores. To wrap up, we often hear that neighborhoods, the neighborhoods in which chain dollar stores tend to locate need retail, so why not dollar stores? I have two thoughts about that. First, there are ways to develop new food stores and more broadly to make healthy food available to more neighborhoods, 
which you'll hear from uh, Councilwoman uh, Vanessa Hall Harper. Letting a chain dollar store in might be an easy way to increase neighborhood retail, but it may also be the worst way to do so. And the second thing is that regulating neighborhoods, uh, sorry, that, that relegating neighborhoods to dollar stores for food options is essentially the same as telling residents they don't deserve better than this. I believe that the city of Chicago wants better for its residents. Thank you very much.